making false statements to the FBI. Flynn also indicated he plans to cooperate with special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation and to allege Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Mueller filed charges against Flynn on Thursday in a three-paragraph information that leaves many questions about Flynn's activities unanswered. Flynn, a retired general, could face up to five years in prison. He is the fourth figure from Trump's presidential campaign to face charges, and there are indications that he may be cooperating with prosecutors in the broader Russian probe. In other words, he plans to give Donald Trump stankin' ass up. Now check out the video, leave your comments, I'll come back with mine. President Trump's former national security advisor, Michael Flynn, you see him entering the courthouse in Washington, D.C. just moments ago, has pleaded guilty, guilty to charges of giving false statements to the FBI. And I would suggest he is now cooperating with the special counsel, Robert Mueller. I want to go straight to our senior justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, in Washington with the latest. Good morning, Pierre. George, quite a fall from grace. A former three-star general, former national security advisor, a man who had been in the military 33 years, pleading guilty. Booked, fingerprinted, and charged by the FBI, now admitting that he lied to the FBI about his contact with the former Russian ambassador concerning uh, sanctions that were being posed uh, by the Obama administration in, in regard to the Russians attacking the 2016 election, George. He uh, told uh, the FBI that he didn't recall certain things, and he, the FBI had information that he actually had had this conversation. Now he's pled guilty, George, facing up to five years in and, prison. And, Pierre, let's walk through the timeline right, right there. The conversations occurred in December 2016. After President Trump had won during the transition, when General Flynn was slated to be national security advisor, he had two conversations with the Russian ambassador Kislyak in December, late December 2016, after President Obama had imposed sanctions in retaliation for the Russian interference in our elections. The suggestion here is that there were discussions about easing those sanctions. We know now that Flynn lied about those conversations to the FBI once he was indeed national security advisor. Exactly, George. It's just days into the administration, the Trump administration, a new administration, and the FBI comes to Flynn and asks him about this conversation with the Russian ambassador. And the FBI stated that he lied to them, and today Flynn is pleading guilty to doing just that, George. I want to bring in our chief White House correspondent, John Carl, for more on this as well. Again, let's stick with that timeline in December and January 2016. After these conversations, the White House said they didn't occur in the way that was being reported. Remember that the acting attorney general at the time, Sally Yates, who has been President Obama's appointee, warned the White House, based on the surveillance of Michael Flynn, that he had been compromised in these conversations. And remember what this was. This was December 29th, which was the day that the Obama administration expelled a long list of Russian diplomats and imposed sanctions on Russia for interfering with the election. And then we learned that Flynn spoke on that day, just hours after that happened, to the Russian ambassador. And what the White House told us when the news broke was that they didn't discuss the sanctions. Uh, it was unbelievable then, and now it turns out not to be true. And then Flynn lied about that to the vice president, to Mike Pence, the vice president, and he was ultimately fired because of that lie. Now we learn that he said that same lie under oath uh, to these FBI investigators. And John, but what George. Else, let, me, let me go on, because I think what else happened in January and February, which was significant, is that at that time, after Sally Yates gives the warning to the White House, she's fired uh, by President Trump. We know then that General Flynn uh, is fired as well by President Trump once the lie is revealed. And that, according to James Comey, the president asked the FBI director at the time to go easy on Flynn. Exactly. And, George, to me, the big question now is why was this indictment so narrow? He's only pleading guilty. He's only charged with lying about that conversation. But we also had learned that he earned more than $500,000 in a separate, uh, this is a separate issue, $500,000 for, for lobbying work on behalf of the Turkish government that he did not disclose. Uh, he did not disclose. That is another thing that he was vulnerable legally. We also know that his son, Michael Flynn Jr., uh, was being questioned by the special counsel. No charge of Michael Flynn Jr. So really, George, the question here is, did he agree to testify on something else? 
uh, in, in exchange for what is a rather narrow indictment here on a single lie, one count of lying to the FBI. Yeah, I want to bring that question to our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, who's also joining us right now. Brian, this certainly would seem to suggest that Michael Flynn had a fair amount of information to offer the special counsel in return. That's right, George. He has promised full cooperation to the Mueller team. He's prepared to testify, we are told by a confidant, against President Trump, against members of the Trump family, and others in the White House. He is prepared to testify that President Trump, as a candidate, Donald Trump, ordered him, directed him to make contact with the Russians, which contradicts all that Donald Trump has said at this point. As well, we're told that Flynn made the decision to cooperate only in the last 24 hours, that he is distraught about the decision but feels he's doing the right thing for his country, that he was facing huge legal bills of more than a million dollars, and that he said that finally he had to go ahead and do this for that reason. He expects to put his house on the market. He is facing serious financial problems. And John Carl, let's go back then on the importance of Michael Flynn uh, right here. Michael Flynn, a chief uh, foreign policy advisor to President Trump, candidate Trump during the campaign, had a relationship with him going straight through even April 2017 after he was fired. One of the reports we had seen is that President Trump had asked him to stay strong in that. So the big question will be what kind of direction was he getting from President Trump during the campaign, perhaps about any work with the Russians? What did Flynn tell him about those conversations? with Ambassador Kislyak. What did the president tell him about the FBI investigation? And remember, George, he was the first major national security figure to come on and support the Trump campaign. Big speaker at the Republican convention, the third person named to the Trump transition team, a very major role in, in, in filling out his national security team. Uh, this, is, this is a major figure. And, uh, and, and, and the question is going to be exactly what, what he told the president. The president actually had recommended, if you remember this, uh, he had actually said that Flynn should demand immunity before testifying before Congress. So one question that had been asked uh, here many times and never emphatically denied is would the president considering issue, issuing a pardon of Michael Flynn? And, that had never happened. And of course, we've had no response yet from the president. I want to bring in our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams, who's joining us by the phone as well. Dan, I'm, I'm reminded that some Several months ago, uh, Flynn's lawyer, in talking about a possible immunity deal, said he has a story to tell. Absolutely. Look, this is a, a really big deal because it comes back to the president. And he, here's what I mean. Meaning we've talked about the fact that Paul Manafort is now charged. And the, the response to that is, well, that's just related to Manafort. And that's just related to his finances. Even the plea of George Papadopoulos, when you actually look at the details there, it's the potential implication of campaign aides. It's not to the president himself. And yet that's what makes this different. The possibility that Flynn may be able to link uh, something to the president himself makes this a very well, different kind of plea. That, that's what I wanted to ask you about. You're familiar with prosecutions. You're, you're familiar with Robert Mueller. You're familiar with how he's worked in the past. It is not a, not a leap at all to conclude that he would not have reached an agreement with General Flynn unless General Flynn could provide uh, significant information about people higher up in the food chain than General Flynn. That would imply the president. Question. If 